Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Bike Radar Diaries. Diaries is about all the fun things we like to get up to in our day-to-day -day life here at Bike Radar. In last week's episode, we went to the University of Bath to use their sports science facilities where Jack and I were tested. We were tested our VO2 max, our lactate threshold and our training zones. It was a pretty grim affair, but I think we had a lot of fun, didn't we? We certainly did, and you can see the link for that episode in the video description below. With our training zones determined, we've been following a training plan set by good friend of the channel and all-round training guru, Tom Bell. We're going to be following this training plan for about six weeks, and following that session, we're going to be going back to the University of Bath to be retested to see if, hopefully, we've had an improvement. Hopefully. Hopefully. I'm actually a, a cycling prodigy. <laughs> this week's episode is all about how to get started with structured training from watching Jack set up his power meter to also understanding a training plan. We also report back on how we're getting on with our first week of structured training and a key workout that Jack and I did a couple of days ago that was pretty nasty. Have fun. Being totally new to structured training and in particular being new to training with a power meter, this week's been a pretty steep learning curve for me. Once you've heard back on how we got on, we're gonna hand back over to Tom Bell, who's gonna give you a more thorough analysis about our training and how we're getting on because he actually knows what he's talking about. So grab a cup of tea or a coffee, sit back and watch me and Jack, particularly Jack, suffer up some climbs. Oh hi Joe, I never expected to see you there. <laughs> so what are we doing today? So today is my first proper day of structured training and before we, we get started with any of that, I'm going to swap out my handsome White Industries cranks in favour of a set of, of rotor power meter equipped cranks. How's your uh, stress level at the minute? Fine, to be honest. So the White Industries one didn't work, so I'm going to fit this ceramic rotor one, which at the end of the day we know is going to make all the difference in the world to my performance. It's definitely what's holding me back is not having a ceramic bottom bracket. Yeah, I think you'll be 10 times faster. I reckon you're right. Does that match up? Ah, close enough. That'll do. See how easy that's going in? It's because I took the time to face and chase my bottom bracket. Because I might be a hack rider, I'm not a hack mechanic. Face and chase. All on good? Beautiful. Perfect dry chain shifting. Obviously, everyone knows that if you're gonna have a bike to do a lot of hardcore training on, you need a, what is it? Carides Bagman bike holder on the back. How else will I take my training accessories? Yeah, yeah. My training ride consisted of six times six minutes of super threshold efforts. We'd have a brief ride over to our favourite local hill and then I'd complete six six minute intervals at around 102 to 105% of my threshold power, which according to my zones is around 306 to 315 watts. My training ride was fairly similar, with four six minute intervals at my threshold power, which, from my testing, means around 250 watts. Hopefully this would be a fairly easy intro into the world of structured training. Good warm up ride out. Great warm up, very, you know, very relaxing through Bristol rush hour traffic. Yeah, obviously riding after work, we have to kind of dodge the traffic, don't we? Then we end up at a hill called Dundry Hill, which is our favourite hill to train on, isn't it? How many times have you been up it, Joe? Over 600, a lot. <laughs> Ready to go then? Ready! Sorry. It's vote number one. It's all number one done. So first effort done, how was it? It's great mate. <laughs> I've done two longer rides since uh, my testing and I've clearly become, I'm actually a, a cycling prodigy. <laughs> and I just need two long rides and I'm at top form. So we're going to up your wattage to about... 450? 450. What do you reckon, 300? <laughs> Let's call it 300. Yeah. We'll see how it feels. So Jack is one interval down out of four. I am one interval down out of six. Mine felt all right. Legs felt a bit sore after a day in the office, but yeah. Interval number two then, I'll let you go first. Off I go. There we 
go. Go on, Joe. And how was that, Joe? Yeah, held about the same power again. I'm feeling pretty in the zone, nice and seated. Um, I've done quite a bit of this already this year, so I feel I'm quite used to it. How about you? Yeah, that felt much more like a, a normal effort. Got the heart rate up a bit. 300 is fine. I managed to keep it about 320 is the average, so quite finding quite, quite, quite hard in the steep bits to maintain that gentle power. So yeah, quite interesting learning how to pedal to power. A time for interval number trois, trois, three. I've realised why I'm finding it so easy. Why? It's the ceramic bottom bracket. Oh yeah! yeah it's the ceramic bottom bracket! That's what it is! Yeah! Let's have fun! Oh. That's interval number three. Average power 359 watts. Been riding for 45 minutes, if you can see that. Normalized power is 297 watts, average 213. And I've got three more to go, Jack. Last one. Last one. He's enjoying it at the minute. At the minute. <laughs> so, I'm all done. My four have done. First day up. Now it's time for Joe. And I get to shout some abuse at you. Oh, two more. But I'll try and rattle through these quick and then we're gonna go for some um, Jack Luke style recovery, aren't we? Yes. I'm standing on the corner, waiting for Joe. It's getting kind of windy and I think I might have to admit that I was a bit enthusiastic just going for shorts, so as always I've completely got dressing for the bike. But... Yes Joe! He loves it! <laughs> How was that? Harder that time, yeah that fifth one. Not the same marks, but it was much harder to, uh, to come by. Looking forward to it being over now. Felt quite good for the first four. Oh yeah! I'm an athlete! Yeah, I'm an athlete! Yeah. <laughs> let's go! Yeah, let's go, stay calm. Don't get sun. Number six done. Huh. 355 again. Surprise now, close to getting each time. So, back from a ride. Pretty hard day out. I'm um, shattered and changed. Yeah. Recovering the way I want to. A little piece of cheese and Instagram. <laughs> to content. <laughs> So this week's key workout for Joe is one that I like to call super threshold, meaning intervals done at an intensity just above the lactate threshold, but not all the way out to VO2 max. The intervals in this type of workout will typically be ridden at an intensity somewhere in the region of 102 to 108% of FTP or functional threshold power, where we've actually set Joe's FTP in training peaks at his tested lactate threshold. And even though the two are gonna be very similar, they're not actually the same thing. This might well be tweaked though as we go forward if some of the workouts prove too easy or on the other side a bit too challenging. As mentioned in the previous video, with Jack's history of consistent riding but not as much experience with out and out structured training, he'll be tackling a workout right at his tested lactate threshold, which again will be likely fairly similar to his FTP or functional threshold power and he'll be looking at doing some six minute intervals. So going back to the super threshold work that Joe's doing, 
This is a really nice effort level that strikes a good balance between high intensity and strong adaptive signals to the body, but also allows for a high tolerable work duration as well. What this means essentially is that a lot of work can be done in a single session. In this example, somewhere in the region of 30 minutes, and that compares to effort levels well above this intensity that might only yield something like eight to 10 minutes. The main aim with Jack's session on the other hand is to see how he gets on spending some time at his threshold out on the road. And then from there, we can accrue some more data points to decide how quickly or steadily we want to ramp up the training over the next few weeks. Both of the guys' workouts will constitute one of two of their key interval sessions for the week. And again, that'll be balanced with a longer low intensity ride and some design for recovery too. So it's time to go over how our training rides went. We're going to start with mine, then we're going to get onto Jack's. So there it is. That was a ride I did last Wednesday. Click on it here in Training Peaks. And then as you can see just here, that's where Tom gives the description of the ride. So it's all quite simple. Here's what I completed. There's my normalized power. But Joe, more importantly, how did you feel on the day? Strong, normal, or weak? <laughs> I'd go for uh, normal to strong, I think, Jack. So if we're going to analyze, look a bit more closely. There's all my laps in the bottom right-hand corner. So they're all around the six minute mark. And I think they were all, if we go to show all here to get all my data up. That's a lot of data. All the laps were all within, in the wattage, I think within three or four watts of each other. Very good. Yeah, so you can kind of click on them. That shows them all there. You truly have legs like clockwork, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to hide hide others. So now we're going to highlight one of the intervals, which you could do by dragging the thing across there. Got it. 619, it's saying there. Uh, 347 average. But what you can see, though, I've had a bit of a funny knee recently and that the power balance is slightly off. When Joe says a funny knee, he means he's got a lifelong, rather gnarly injury to his knee. So that imbalance is actually quite impressive, one might say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but definitely a uh, right leg is, it felt a bit weird when I did the ride and that's shown because it's 3% less powerful. But yeah, on the whole, that's kind of what a standard training ride for me looks like. Um, click on that again. You can see I got some fairly high heart rates. I was hitting the kind of, the kind of right zones just above my threshold heart rate. And yeah, Tom always sets pretty good uh, stuff for me to do. Now, let's get on to Jack. I'm sure we've got some thrilling data to look at. So now we're on to Jack's ride. Let's get ready to uh, see some truly impressive figures. So there's your workout. Same one, Wednesday, threshold, four times six. I'm gonna click on it. Wow, this means nothing to me, Joe. Talk me through what I need to know. Well, interestingly, you've got a uh, record five minute power there, but obviously you've not uploaded much to Training Peaks recently, so that's probably why. The only thing I've ever uploaded to Training Peaks, in fact. Yes, yes. Um, your normalized power was 241, as you can see there. And what else have we got? There's the, there's the kind of workout that Tom gave you, which you, you follow to the T, which is very good of you. <laughs> I'm very dedicated to this cause. It's been a good start, I think, already. Then if we go in, as we said in the video, there's Jack's efforts. You can see there, there's one, two, three, and four. The first one we felt went a little bit too low, so we kind of zoom in on it there like that. We'll see that for around six minutes, he averaged 281, but you felt that felt a bit easy, didn't you? Yeah, I was aiming for 243 as prescribed by Tom's plan, and that 280 was me pretty much soft pedaling. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit too easy on that first effort, but moving on to the second one, this felt go. a bit more natural. So in this one we aimed for an average of 300 and that perhaps owing slightly to the parameter over reading and maybe because I've done a little bit of extra riding felt more like an actual effort. And then third one, exactly the same average power. That's very impressive. My God. And then the fourth one dropped a little bit and as you said you got a bit tired on that fourth one didn't you? Yeah I had to kind of work a little bit harder and you can see that spike towards the end where my average power must have been dropping and on some of those steeper sections I've tried to compensate so that kind of tallies up with my real world experience. And yeah that's it so now um, we've got more stuff to do in the next few days. Oh how very unpleasant. <laughs> Bye! 
So as you've already seen, we are a week into our training plan and Jack, how have you found it so far? Yeah, like I said, it's been a pretty steep learning curve. There's a few things I didn't really expect I would struggle with uh, as such. The one thing in particular was, well, to start actually understanding the training plan was one that was totally new to me. He babied me through that. Joe did a wonderful job of talking me through exactly what was expected of me. And it was every bit as horrible as I imagined. Also, I mean, I've ridden with power meters before in the previous hill climb season. You know, I could kind of keep an eye on my power, make sure I wasn't blowing up. But actually riding two power consistently over a block is something that's quite new to me. And I found it quite hard, without sounding too arrogant, to keep the power low enough over those, uh, over those blocks. So that's something else I think will come with time and I'll get a bit smooth and be able to yeah, ride more consistently. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Of course, the real surprise of the day and the real reason I was struggling to, to keep those power numbers down is obviously the ceramic bottom bracket. I mean, it's just proven instantly they're the ultimate upgrade. Ultimate. Let's see how I go. <laughs> so that's another episode of Bike Radar Diaries done. We're still kind of trying to find our feet with these training episodes, so now's a good time for you guys to let us know what you'd like to see in the next episode. So yeah, if you've got any more questions, if you want to see more detailed analysis, if you want to see more of Tom Bell, you want to see less of me gurning, let us know in the comments. We'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. And as always, thanks for watching. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes. Bye. Bye.